Chapter 5, Part 3. I know what we'll do, said Gatsby. We'll have Clip Springer play the piano. He went out of the room calling, Ewing! And returning in a few minutes, accompanied by an embarrassed, slightly worn young man with shell rim glasses and scanty blonde hair, he was now decently clothed in a sport shirt, open at the neck, sneakers, and duck trousers of a nebulous hue. Did we interrupt your exercises? inquired Daisy politely. I was asleep, cried Mr. Clipspringer in a spasm of embarrassment. That is, I'd been asleep. Then I got up. Clipspringer played the piano. Plays the piano, said Gadsby, cutting him off. Don't you, Ewing, old sport. I don't play well. I don't. I hardly play at all. I'm all out of prac. We'll go downstairs, interrupted Gadsby. He flipped a switch. The gray windows disappeared as the house glowed full of light. In the music room, Gadsby turned on a solitary lamp beside the piano. He lit Daisy's cigarette from a trembling match and sat down with her on a couch far across the room, where there was no light save the gleaming floor bounced in from the hall. When Clip Springer had played the love nest, he turned around on the bench and searched unhappily for Gadsby in the gloom. I'm all out of practice, you see. I told you I couldn't play. I'm all out of practice. Don't talk so much, old sport, commanded Gatsby. Play. In the morning. In the evening. Ain't we got fun? Outside the wind was loud and there was a faint flow of thunder along the sound. All the lights were going on in West Egg now. The electric trains men carrying were plunging home through the rain from New York. It was the hour of a profound human change. An excitement was generating on the air. On the air. One thing sure and nothing sure, the rich get richer and the poor get children. In the meantime, in between time. As I went over to say goodbye, I saw that the expression of bewilderment had come back into Gadsby's face, as though a faint doubt had occurred to him. As the quality of his present happiness, almost five years, there must have been some moments, even that afternoon, when Daisy tumbled short of his dreams not through her own fault, but because of the colossal vitality of his illusion. It had gone beyond her, beyond everything. He had thrown himself into it with a creative passion, adding to it all the time, decking it out with every bright feather that drifted his way. No amount of fire or freshness can challenge what a man will store up in his ghostly heart. As I watched him, he adjusted himself a little visibly. His hand took hold of hers, and as she said something low in his ear, he turned toward her with a rush of emotion. I think that voice held him most, with its fluctuating, feverish warmth, because it couldn't be overdreamed. That voice was a deathless song. They had forgotten me, but Daisy glanced up and held out her hand. Gatsby didn't know me now at all. I looked once more at them, and they looked back at me, remotely possessed by intense life. Then I went out of the room and down the marble steps into the rain, leaving them there together.